Well, the Peregrine has taken flight, but Pittsburgh's attempt to land on the moon may be in jeopardy. Pittsburgh-based Astrobotic built the Peregrine Lunar Lander. It says its systems were all powered on and performing as expected, and then a problem. Ross Kadati has a story all new at 5. Four, three, we have ignition. and liftoff of the first United Launch Alliance Vulcan rocket. At 2.18 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the sky around the Kennedy Space Center lit up like the sun as a powerful Centaur 5 rocket roared to life, taking Pittsburgh-based Astrobotics Peregrine Lander and Carnegie Mellon's Iris Lunar Rover toward our closest celestial neighbor. Oh my God, um, Iris, like our rover is on that rocket going up the moon. It's a very, very surreal feeling. Watching it go up in the rocket was was unbelievable. It's, it still doesn't feel real. This morning's mission, get Peregrine to the moon and drop off the Iris rover so it can get to work. We are hoping to extract data from the interactions between the rover and the lunar regolith, that is the lunar soil. We're looking at between a 20 and 60 hour lifespan of the rover. There are so many possibilities as to what can happen for Iris. All was well, that is, until Astrobotics noticed an issue on this first entirely commercial mission to the moon. The lander wasn't pointing in the right direction due to a possible failure in the propulsion system. They're currently working on a technical issue uh, with the lander. When it comes to space exploration, team members say nothing is guaranteed. So for now, Iris team members watch and wait to find out the lander and the rover's fate. No matter what happens, this is this is only the beginning for Carnegie Mellon, for the United States, and, and really for the world. A new golden age of space exploration. And I think that the next step being the moon, then we go to Mars, and then it's beyond. Ross Gadotti, KDKA TV News.